Hi people, welcome to the second part of my making a whirly gig lure video series. Mm, as I've noticed when editing the f part one video, I've noticed that the uh, camera stopped uh, filming after a while, while I was turning down the lure. Uh, I'm using a picture camera, Nikon Cool Pix. I uh, never used it for videos before and I don't have a manual to it as well, so I'm uh, suspecting this camera uh, stops after uh, some minutes of filming so I gotta keep the single sequences short. What was missing uh, whilst the lure was still on the last was the fine sanding and rounding off the edges here. I always like to round off edges because uh, on sharp edges first uh, they tend to crack easily and second uh, epoxy top coat doesn't adhere very well to sharp uh, edges so I always round them off. Okay, what I've also started to mark the center lines down here and uh, well I do it this way. I've. I made the first line, I'm making these ones free-handed by eyeballing. Then I'm making a crosshair here, which I've done already. Now I turn this thing over, use the uh, crosshairs as a reference, and Draw the center line on the other side. Just got to take care that the sequence wouldn't get too long, not that the camera would stop filming uh, without me noticing. It's just the picture camera. It's not made for making videos, but uh, my video camera is spoiled and uh, I got to go into nego nego negotiations with my uh, home government to buy a new one. <laughs> okay, now two parallel, uh, uh, two center lines on either side. Now I'm flipping over 90 degrees again using the crosshairs at the rear cross grain at the rear end as a reference. Drawing the center line here. Okay. Now this one. And now again the fourth one. Um, virtually I'm by my marker lines I'm dividing the Lewis circumference into quarters. That's maybe easy to understand. All right. I'm lucky that I have good eyeballing abilities and ability to estimate a bit. All right. What I do now, I'm eyeballing down the cone of the tail taper whether the lines are all uh, in the right position, especially in the front, and that looks quite good. I will do, I will extend the lines right to the end now, to the tip of the nose, and they should meet with the indention there. All right. That looks quite nice. If I'm off too much, I will erase the pencil lines and do new ones. But I'm okay with this. <laughs> Alright, maybe you can see the lines. This is the way I'm, I'm looking at the lure. Because of the tape of nose and tail, you, you could eyeball quite well whether the lines are in the right position and the right direction. I hope you could see it in the video now. Okay, I'll stop the sequence now before the camera turns off again. 
Okay, now after the marking is done of the uh, lengthwise marker lines, it's time to separate the head from the body. Make sure you saw down to the end, possibly do not crack the last bit of wood grain off because it might tear deep holes into the wood grain. Alright, that was it. Get rid of the dust. Okay, this is how it looks now. Now we'll take our 40 grit sandpaper file and file this smooth, temporary, because it is, uh, we must mark the center on these uh, cut surfaces as well. And it's easier to do on uh, this round stem, remaining stem. So just break the edges a bit so that it will be nice and round. This is just for my own eyeballing. Okay. That was it. Here's the pencil. And now we are extending the marker lines onto the uh, end grain surface. Just okay, the center is about here. Okay. To make crosshairs again. Right now on the other side. First extend the lines down over the edge of the uh, end grain and so center of the round remaining stem is about here. Ah, you see it's a bit rough there. But well, that's okay. Was here. I rather refer to the center of the remaining stem then the uh, marker lines and uh, I do it this way that in the end my reference would be my own eyeballing abilities rather more than the uh, marker lines okay now I'll make another indention in the center right here and on the other, on the head portion as well. Okay, two indentions and in center. Right, I'll stop this now, not to get over time. Now comes the delicate bit, which is drilling free-handed. Uh, I would use a three mil uh, Fastener bit to drill Okay, take this out of the way. It's down on the floor. All right, put it there. Uh, a three mil fastener bit to drill the center hole freehanded. So I'm using the marker lines as a reference.
Okay. Looks quite good. Using the marker line and the end grain plane as a reference. Okay, I would never drill all the way through because uh, you're most likely off with the uh, hole direction. So I'd rather drill from either side so the holes would meet somewhere in center. This way uh, you uh, minimize the wandering of the drill bit. Um, and have uh, the uh, exit of the hole centered on either side. If you would drill through from one side, it will never come out centered. And uh, you minimize the off direction for 50%, because you meet somewhere in center. The exits of the, uh, of the bore will always be centered. So start carefully. Let's check. Looks good. And this one is the easier part because the piece is shorter, the head piece. And actually this uh, beech wood is quite hard. I've never made a, a whirly gig out of beech wood. Something. Okay, I guess I'm off too much. Hold it against the light. Ah, looks good. So now let's check whether my three millimeter, three by two millimeter brass tubing, which serves as a bearing bush, passes through. It does not from this side and does not from this side. But by looking through it doesn't look that bad. So let's widen the hole a bit. It doesn't look too bad. No, it doesn't pass from this side and doesn't pass from this side. So... Let's widen the hole a bit more. It's going to be filled up with epoxy in later anyway. Okay, didn't knock down on the floor. Okay, now it finally passes through. Yeah. If it's running a bit off center, doesn't matter. It will only add to the vibration of the lure. Okay, this drilling operation is completed now. Passes through. Easy, flush. It's okay, so I'll stop this now. Uh, now an even more, de more, even more delicate operation is in order, which is drilling the center hole for the wire shaft through the rear section. Um, the wire shaft is uh, it's here. It's 1.5 mil in diameter. I've already bent an eye to it with the closure coils uh, a bit distant to one another. This is for the glue to uh, bond better when finally gluing this wire shaft in. So if you're wrapping the rear eye, do not wrap coil against coil, but leave a little space in between each, each coil uh, for the glue to flow in. So it will never ever tear out again. Okay, let's get started. Um, if this uh, 1.5 mil holds shouldn't meet, 
uh, I can always extend it to a bigger diameter. It's just I do not have uh, extra long 1.5 drill bits. So uh, I've made myself a substitute drill bit of a piece of uh, 1.5 wire, beat the ends flat and uh, cut the, uh, ground the cutting edge to it. But using this thing is hazardous. I'll get back to that later. So let's start to drill now. So again eyeballing for direction. The drill bit uh, found grip in the indention and now I start drilling. Always turn around the workpiece to keep direction. Slow feed and a lot of RPMs. Let the drill bit turn fast and slow feed. 